Welcome back to Bio6612. Today we're going to talk more about an introduction to GLMs. So this will be a somewhat shorter lecture than the last two, and we're just going to cover the components, the three components of GLMs today. So I've talked a little bit about the GLM motivation in the previous two lectures, but basically the objective here is to quantify the association between uh, a response or outcome, yi, and a set of predictors, xi. And we already know methods for when yi has a normal distribution. And these are coming, these, this is linear regression coming from 6611. Um, and there are some cases uh, for like skewed responses, for example, where some transformation of yi, like the log transform, could be employed to remedy non-normality and then you can still do linear regression. However, if in other cases, for example, if yi is binary coming from a Bernoulli distribution, then there's no transformation that's going to yield a normal distribution for that outcome. So you have to employ some other type of technique. And that's where GLMs come in. So generalized linear models were initially developed by Nelder and Wedderburn in 1972. And with GLMs, you assume that a known function of mu i equals expectation y i is li related linearly to those covariates x i. And that's what this equation is saying. It's saying, okay, so I have um, some set of, of covariates x i and some weights on those covariates beta. And I can apply some kind of link, some function to, uh, to the outcome um, expectation of, the expectation of the outcome um, to, put those xi t of betas and those gi of mu on the same scale, put them into the same range. And this link that uh, does that to the expectation of yi, so that the, the expectation of yi is in the same range of the xi, xi t betas is called a link function. Because it links or connects the linear predictor, which is what this xi transpose beta is called, with uh, the mean of the outcome, which is expectation of yi or mu. Uh, one of the things that's the same as linear, as pure linear regression is that you still assume independence of y1 through yn. Um, and you do have a linearity assumption as well, but instead of linearity applying to the y's themselves, they now apply to g of mu i, which is not necessarily equal to expectation of y i. And then uh, your covariates x i are treated as fixed just as they were in linear regression. So there are three main components of the GLM, and these components each need to be specified when you're setting up your generalized linear model. Uh, the first component is the distribution, which is also called the random component. And that distribution is for the yi uh, values, the outcome. And the assumption, one of the assumptions of GLMs is that yi has to follow an exponential family distribution. And this is why we spent so much time talking about exponential families in the last lecture. You want to be familiar with what form um, those distributions take. The second component is the systematic component, which we also call the linear predictor, or xi transpose beta. And often in the GLMs, um, we, we call this linear predictor eta because it can be easier when writing out these models to just make it one variable name. And the third component is the link function g, which connects xi to mu i. Um, by uh, g of mu i equals eta i. And um, the g should be analytically tractable in the sense that uh, you can solve it by hand um, and get the inverse to find what mu i is equal to in terms of the g inverse of the linear predictor eta. So let's talk a little bit more about link functions. So the link function g that you choose when you're doing a GLM depends on what the distrib uh, distribution of your outcome is. Uh, and there are a couple common ones. So um, you might think of taking the log of mu i. You would do this if you have Poisson data or count data. 
Another common one is the logit link function, uh, where logit is the log of mu i over 1 minus mu i. And you actually saw this come up last lecture when we derived the exponential family form for the Bernoulli distribution, um, because this is the link function for like logistic regression for when you see binary data. And then another common one is something called the probit function. And this is also for binary data, but it's a slightly different function. And in this case, this um, capital phi inverse is the CDF for a standard normal random variable. And we'll see that towards the end of our logistic regression lectures in a few weeks. And this is the slide that sort of ties together the stuff that we talked about in the last lecture and the in, in the with the exponential family and these three components of uh, generalized linear models. So if we observe some outcome y and some set of covariates x for i equals 1 to n subjects, um, then if we're going to use a GLM, we assume that yi given x has an exponential family distribution of the form um, that's printed here, like what we've seen before. And we would say that the link function g is canonical if theta i is equal to eta i. Practically speaking, what this means is that you can find the link function g for your outcome y what, pretty easily once you put yi in exponential family form. It will give you an ideal link um, to use in your generalized, gener generalized linear model. And because of this, uh, exponential families with the canonical link are preferred um, because it's easy to find the link. And then along with that, there are some nice properties that help you estimate your parameters as well as interpret them and do inference, things like finding p-values and confidence intervals for those parameters. Uh, in terms of uh, the actual interpretation, if you use the logit link for a binary response, which is lo lo logit link is the canonical link for the Bernoulli and binomial distributions, um, then you get an odds ratio interpretation. And the log link is the canonical link for the Poisson response, and this gives a rate ratio interpretation. And we're going to go over both of these and practical examples in more detail in the next several lectures.